welcome to our evening prayer for Trinity Sunday. We thank John again for the music, including the introit by Thomas Tallis that we've just heard, and our anthem from the Lydian singers later in the service. Ollie will lead our intercessions, and our readers are Trish Ulmer and Michael Hendry. Let's be quiet for a moment as we come to worship God. We've come together on this Trinity Sunday to celebrate in word and song and to affirm our faith in God, the three in one. We come into God's presence to worship together. God is love and he that abides in love abides in God and God in him. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. The Lord is King and hath put on glorious Have lift up their voice, the floods 
The reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain did he fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then th flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. The second lesson is from the Gospel of St John, chapter 16, verses 5 to 15. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, 
that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Here endeth the second lesson. share together as we say the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Amen. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen, amen. o lord show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation o lord save the queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only Thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who hast given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of thy divine majesty to worship the unity 
We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities who livest and reignest one God world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God the Holy Trinity speak to us in his word and in our worship today. Amen. May I start this evening on a personal note. I should have preached at Evensong at Chesbodine on Trinity Sunday last year but I was in hospital after a heart attack and John had to prepare a sermon at very short notice. I'd like to thank all those from across the Benefice for their help and support and kindness at that time. Fortunately, from a point when I wondered if I would ever lead worship or preach again, a few weeks later I was able to do just that. 
and I thank God and you for that possibility. At the end of our reading from Isaiah 6, we heard, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. It's pointed out that Trinity Sunday is the only major Christian festival not an, about an event or, or afterwards a follower of Jesus. But it's a day that can be fraught with problems. It used to be said that it's the day in which theological students sat on the front row and counted the heresies in the first few minutes of the sermon. A friend of ours was attached to me and another Baptist minister when training for the ministry. The college had what were called theme weeks. One was on the Trinity. After she got home from at the end of the week, she rang up and asked, Marcus, explain the Trinity. I didn't then, and I won't this evening, though I hope we will see some of the effects of our belief in one God, in three persons. Problems stem from the feeling that we need to explain the Trinity. But how do you explain a mystery? Sometimes it seems to be a mathematical formula. Somehow three equals one. But I don't see our faith like that. At the centre of our God is relationship between the three persons, an opening to mankind. Maybe rather than attempting to explain the Trinity tonight, we should illustrate the idea. The famous story of St. Patrick using the shamrock to demonstrate God as three in one. My own favourite is from Graham Greene's novel, Monsignor Quixote. The village priest and the former communist mayor are unlikely friends. When the priest is raised to being a Monsignor, the two make a bizarre trip across the country to find a purple bib and matching socks as befits his new status. In the evening they stop for something to eat and drink. They're leaning against the wall of a farm and the ex-mayor asked his friend to explain the Trinity to him. You see these bottles, says the Monsignor, two bottles equal in size. The wine that they contained was the same substance and was born at the same time. There you have God the Father and God the Son, and there in the half bottle, God the Holy Ghost. Same substance, same birth. They're inseparable. Whoever partakes of one partakes of all three. But then he stops short. The mayor says he's ingenious. But Father Quixote sat in silence looking at the bottles. When the mayor struck a match to light a cigarette, he saw the bowed head of his companion. What's the matter, Father? he asked. May God forgive me. Father Quixote said, for I've sinned, I've given wrong instruction. The Holy Ghost is equal in all respects to the Father and the Son, and I've represented him by this half bottle. Is that a serious er error, Father? It's anathema. It was condemned expressly at I forget which council, a very early council, perhaps it was Nicaea. Don't worry, Father, the matter's easily put right. We'll throw away and forget this half bottle and I'll bring a whole bottle from the car. So it was, they drank another bottle. Maybe it's not only Baptist ministers who might be accused of heresy. But on this Trinity Sunday, what do I reading say to us? Isaiah is not about specifically God in three persons, although we have the recitation of holy, holy, holy. 
but it's seen as a picture of the divine beings, cherubim and seraphim, that were, of course, carved on the Ark of the Covenant, that Ark of Indiana Jones fame, if you don't know it from the Old Testament. They worship God in those familiar verses. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. From there, those words are repeated in Revelation and come to us in the words of the communion service. But that passage finishes with that challenge. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I send, said, here am I, send me. So in this vision in the temple, God wants to involve Isaiah and indeed us in the life of the world and making possible that we are part of his way. In our gospel reading, something developed from the encounter. It's about God, Jesus' Father and ours, wanting to involve us as followers of Jesus in his activity in the world sharing more in his love and message through his spirit. The whole passage is about God's involvement in the world for our benefit and the benefit of those around us. It speaks of Jesus' life and activity as a human being and also of the spirit, his gift to us. That spirit is often portrayed as the wind and of course it's a play on words as in both Greek and, Latin and Hebrew, the languages of the Bible, spirit, wind and breath are the same word. Remembering, of course, that they didn't have the weather forecast that we have to tell us where the wind is going to be coming from. Like the changes in our weather this week as the wind comes from the cold north. The spirit who blows through the world and our lives is the spirit that comes as God. But what of the Trinity? Our Father, the Creator, the Son who was fully human and fully God, a conclusion that took several hundred years to formulate into words that we have them in the so-called Nicene Creed. The Spirit whose coming we celebrated last week, who comes continually to give us life and love. And love is at the centre of all he is as creator, as the one who came to bring us the new revitalised relationship between man and God, and also as the spirit who brings love and life to us in our day-to-day -day lives. That love and relationship are summed up in the Trinity and its relationship to himself. In this Russian icon by Rublev, we sometimes called the Old Testament Trinity. Like our passage in Isaiah, the story of Abraham being visited by three angels and his sharing hospitality with them, remembering that in the early parts of the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord really means God himself. It's pictured as the three of them are around a table on which is a chalice and a space in the front. A space for us to join them both in celebration and in their life together. In the end, the Trinity is about God's relationship with us and with the world. But what of the world in this strange situation we find now? The gradual lessening of lock lockdown, yet the distress of so many who have been ill and died. The world too seemingly is, is in uproar, particularly in America, but reflected here because of man's inhumanity to man, particularly because of the colour of your skin. In all of this, and remember others throughout history have faced similar limitations and restrictions, yet in each of these times we can hear the words of Jesus, I've come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. 
I don't know if you've been counting the heresies, but may I suggest that I haven't got some theory right or wrong tonight? Or maybe I have. Maybe I've used the wrong words to keep some people happy. But what we're talking about is the existence of God sharing with us his life and his love. Even if, like Isaiah, we could say, woe is me, God can and will do something about it and bring us into the flow of his love in the world. What of today? Today, when the epidemic still rages in our land, however slowly it may be declining. Today, when men and women are shouting out for peace, for equality, for justice. I don't know if you heard on Friday morning on the Radio 4 special music programme, Desert Island Discs, when there was one person talking about the hymn by John Newton, Amazing Grace. What got me was that they spoke for several minutes and nobody at first even mentioned the, that it was a hymn or it came from the Christian context. What it had done for many people in that context was to speak to them of sharing, of healing, of being saved. But John Newton, of course, had been a slave trailer, bef trader before he became a minister and a hymn writer. He changed. His life changed dramatically. That's the offer that the Trinity brings to us. To be different people. People who involve ourselves in his world and become his people. Reflecting the creator, the redeemer and the ongoing love and presence of the Holy Spirit. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Here am I, said Isaiah, send me. What is our response? Are we amongst those who will go into the world with and for our God in all his fullness? Think about that tonight. Amen. A couple of weeks ago on one of our broadcast services we played a video meditation by Anne but unfortunately the sound was lost in transfer. We'll see that now as it continues our thoughts this Trinity Sunday.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name we are baptized and into whose fellowship we have been received, we cling in faith to you, the only God. We praise you, dear Father, for having loved us and sent your Son to die for our sins. We praise you, dear Jesus, for having redeemed us from our sins by sacrificing yourself for us. We praise you, Holy Spirit, for having sanctified us. As for you gave us faith and through faith cleansed us from sin. O triune God, graciously enable us always to believe and obey and to worship and confess you. Creator, Redeemer and Sanctified, one God, eternal and all-glorious forever. Amen. Holy Lord God, Father and Redeemer, we can do nothing in your name without your blessing at this time. You sent your disciples out into the world to baptise with the Holy Spirit, and we claim this right to speak your words in love, truth and obedience to you, to encourage others to know you all the days of their lives. Lord, you came for all people, black and white, for every race and every creed. You loved each one as your own. Help us to see others as our brothers and sisters, supporting the weak and the lame, the strong and those needing extra. Thank you for giving us faith and allowing us to change mindsets. Help us turn hate into your love, Lord. We do this in your name. Amen. We pray for our Queen who leads by example and for her family. For the government fighting the COVID-19 that they all work together for the good of mankind. May we bring our young people to you, Lord, our frogs, for healing and encouragement. Give them strength through trust and prayer, knowing that you love them dearly. We pray for our Bishop Michael and Bishop Sarah, for clergy, Becky, Chris, Marcus, and all who work to enable your truth to be told. With thanks to Brett and his team, for John and choirs. Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing on all who follow in your footsteps, that we have your word to share with all who ask, as it is passed down by your holy words. Lord Jesus, may we bring to you Stoke-on-Turn and their church family. Join us in giving thanks for the cooperation and care we have for each other. Please pray for our schools, for the safety and well-being of children and staff as they begin the process of reopening. Please pray for Reverend Mark Kinder as he takes up his appointment as Anglican chaplain at Stoke Heath Prison. May all who work and live in prison be inspired to be considerate of each other's needs during this difficult time. Let's pray for the Morris Chandler Sports Centre that it may survive the financial constraints of this pandemic and return to normality for the benefit of all. 
We pray for the many businesses in our parishes, that they may all prosper in spite of the present difficulties. We pray also for the United Reformed Church and the clubs and societies who play a valuable role in the well-being of our communities and for your people as we struggle with lockdown and fear for each other. Help us to be strong comforters to those who can't help themselves, the sick in mind, body and spirit. Give us a generous nature to help our friends and neighbours in this time of uncertainty, Christian or not. We bring to you, Heavenly Father, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, feeling such pain. Comfort them, give them the peace only you can give. You gave us the command to go and make believers of all people, to love them as you loved us. To aim for your perfection as we live our lives in you. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall we sing together our final hymn, that hymn for Trinity Sunday, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let's conclude our evening worship as we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.